and then we'll be recording this as well. So be aware of that. And I'm pretty informal. So if you have a question, feel free to ask me in that moment. Um, and sometimes it's easier to answer that question while we're on that same page than is several uh, minutes later. So I'm actually going to use the PowerPoint that is right here on there. So if you want to follow along with me, fine. If you want to download it and look at it, you're more than welcome. I'm going to go ahead and open this. Get it going. Here we go. So um, again, my name is Cynthia Henry. Um, I cover the College of Health and Human Sciences as a subject liaison. And then my colleague is in the room with me, Jing Jing Wu, and she's gonna be helping people online. So if you have a question, feel free to um, drop a chat in there or unmute yourself even if you want to do that and um, ask. Um, but if you're needing help, She's there available for you to um, get my attention if need be. Okay, there we go. And then I go. Let me try again. There it goes. I don't know what that, that was weird. Okay, so um, what we're going to cover today, just an overview of Tableau. There are several different kinds of products. Um, we have some Tableau terminology that we'll talk about. We'll work through some data visualization projects um, with some data where we're all working together and then we'll kind of download a new data set and um, try to let y'all kind of navigate your own. So we have Tableau Public and um, that's what we'll be using today um, and so you can sign up right here. Of course it is on this page as well. It's this top one. So you may want to go ahead and sign in there if you hadn't already. It does take a minute for you to verify your email back. Um, so you'll have to open your email or have it open if you already have it open on your own computer and then confirm once they send you an email. So it takes a little bit, but usually it's not too long. Um, then there is Tableau Desktop for students and Tableau Desktop for instructors. And we'll talk more about that here, but you can find some additional information um, in the PowerPoint. So Tableau Public is the, if you will, the online cloud platform that Tableau has. And it has some limitations. It only supports up to uh, 15 million rows. Now, you think that is a large data set, and it is. But if you start working with like some retail data sets where you have to have, you know, like a thousand SKUs and each SKU has a small, medium, large. So you really do end up getting um, a lot of rows in there. Um, and it also works with anything that is an Excel, Google Sheets, which is nice, CSV, and MS Access. MS Access is a database um, building platform from Microsoft. So, if you didn't know what that was. And then, um, it has some publishing limits. You can only save your work to the web to public um, up to 10 gigabytes. I have several in there already. I don't think I'm anywhere close to the 10 gigabytes. Um, but if you get to that, then you may need to change to a different platform. Um, and anything you save in Tableau Public is viewable by others. So now you can disable the data download, um, but your items will still be viewable online. So you really shouldn't be sharing anything here that is not public information, right? Nothing confidential here. Um, if you need something confidential, you need to probably get into one of those other platforms if you're a student or an instructor in the desktop from Tableau. So. Sorry, my nose is a little runny today. I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm going to try not to be sniffly the whole time, but we just have to go with it. Um, 
The Tableau desktop is the other platform where you can actually load the software to your um, computer and it allows you to save files to your computer so you don't have a limit to how much you can store there because it's whatever your computer can hold. Um, and it does have some additional data connections here. So uh, some databases will connect with Tableau Desktop and some other cloud services. Um, I, I believe our OneDrive here on campus will connect to that. I haven't tried it, but I think that is, so you could have data stored in your OneDrive and pull that into Tableau Desktop directly if you needed to, wanted to. Um, and then there's the students license that's renewable each year. And they're just checking that you're still a student. They really want you to be able to use this platform. Um, and so they don't, if you don't have the money to pay for it, they're gonna give you a free license as you're a student. Um, and then the um, instructors one, is anybody that is teaching um, can use this. So like today, I could use it because I'm teaching everybody how to use um, Tableau. Um, and anything that is non-commercial could be used. But if we were really talking about that across campus, if somebody was from recruiting and really using it there, that data would not be non-commercial. And so you would have to really use a paid for platform instead of this license. So just be aware of that. If you're teaching somebody else something in it, then you can use it. If you're really doing um, commercial research in it, you cannot use it. So what can Tableau make? Tableau can make a lot of things. All these things here on this um, slide are available. Of course, your normal pie charts, maps, bar charts, um, stacked bar charts, all that kind of stuff is here. Um, but some other things that maybe not everybody knows about um, a tree map. I was not familiar with a tree map until I started working in Tableau. Um, and then this um, packed bubbles chart. Um, I was not familiar with that either. But then you can turn the packed bubbles into a word cloud. And I am very familiar with those. This little side bar here is actually part of what's in Tableau. And I just wanted you to see it. Um, before we actually use it. And so you can see they're kind of, all, the, all this text is represented in the actual charts over here. So then this is what um, the platform in Tableau looks like. This is called a sheet. Now that's common knowledge. You know, Excel has sheets. And I know you can't see it here, but way down here in the corner it says sheet. And we'll have our data source over here, then we'll have our sheets, and we'll be working in this area. And so some terminology that I think is different for Tableau is, do we have a question that I need to answer? That might be my email, I bet you. Hold on, sorry guys. I will turn that off so we don't hear it being blonged. And now we hopefully will not have that. Okay. So, um, what I was saying, so Sheets is pretty common language in different um, platforms, but they use the word visualizations, and they call it like Vizies or Viz or Views. And I do think that is kind of unique to this platform. It's not my favorite term, but that's what they use, so we'll roll with it today. Um, and then each sheet can have one possibly a complex view on this sheet, but the whole workbook along the bottom, you can see we can get multiple sheets and then we'll have a new dashboard and that dashboard would um, hold multiple views that could be complex or simple. So, and we'll see that here. So this is a dashboard and what it looks like in Tableau, and this has three different views or busies, um, and they pulled it into this single dashboard. And I really kind of like this, um, how they've set it up here in public. You can really let your audience control it however you want to control it. So if you don't want them to manipulate that data at all, you can just block it and they can just view. 
you want them to manipulate some of them, you can. You can have them manipulate it on the um, da uh, dashboard or on each sheet, and you can let them see that. So I kind of really like that, especially if you're using for presentation, um, then you can just have it set exactly how you want it to be for them, and then they would be able to use it. Okay, so as we're talking about um, data in Tableau, um, we have dimensions and measures. And let me just see. Yes, I thought I had not brought my notes up, but I did. I just haven't been looking at them yet. So um, Tableau considers data variables to be either dimensions or measures. And they are still identified in this blue and green in the platform. And this is what I struggled with the most as I was learning Tableau. Um, I, I could get what measures were, right? That's numbers. Anything that's numerical value, that's gonna be measures. Um, but I was having a harder time understanding what could be um, dimensions. So I kind of was thinking in my head, anything else. So uh, you have categorical variables like stream data, um, text data, geographical data maybe in, in there. Um, time and date variables may show up in the dimensions. Um, and you have to understand how Tableau is looking at that because it's important because Tableau will try to help you or force you to use certain visualizations based on the data that you load. Um, and so Tableau tries to predict what you want or need which is a nice feature when it gets us right, but it's annoying a little bit sometimes when it gets us wrong. And so we just have to be cognizant of what dimensions are and what measures are. So a good example for Tableau is, in Tableau, and I'm gonna say this a couple of times because it's so important, a date is equal to a month, a day, a year. If it doesn't have those three components, it's not a date in Tableau. So a lot of times that year is uh, looking at a numerical value, but technically all other date and time would be dimensional. So that's, I kind of was thrown by that. Okay, so if Tableau sees two categorical um, variables, it will not understand how to build a, a visualization that is based on an X, Y axis, like a scatter plot. It doesn't know how to chart the points over the two categorical axes. Um, it thinks of a scatter plot as numbers on the X and Y axis. And it's good to know um, this because it impacts how you um, can pick a chart. Um, but you can also manipulate this as well, and we'll see that. And for example, if you can't find your variable, um, you may want to look at the other area and see if it is um, in the wrong list. And then you can just relabel it so Tableau knows how to treat it, and it will be in the right place. So let's talk about some data preparation. Some basic formatting for data is um, data really wants it to be super clean. Um, remove any empty or non-data rows. Make sure that each row is complete, like we don't have a space. Remove totals and subtotals. You really just need a block of data, and that's what works best for Tableau. Um, and I was having a hard time with Tableau Pivot today, so I don't think we'll actually see that today. Um, it, it may be functional once we get in there. We, if it is, we'll look at it, but if not, that's fine. Um, and it's not a big deal. You can just get your data ready and then pull it in, and it still all works. And then again, here it is. Date equals a month, a day, a year. And it's, it's not just a year, not just the single option. So we have to have tidy data. I'm sure as you've been working with data, you probably have heard this um, term before. And tidy data really means that each variable must have its own column, and each observation must have its own row, and each value must have its own cell. And that all of that needs to be filled out for Tableau to be happy. If you have like a, an empty space, or you have a question mark, or you have an NA, or sometimes you'll even see a tilde in data, then 
you uh, you need to kind of clean that up and then put it back in the tableau. Okay, so that is just our basics there. I'm going to get out of this. Oh, you know what? I think we have one more tableau. Yeah, so let's talk about this. This is a good example of what I was just talking about. This side is really how a human wants to read it. We have the um, state, what type of sector it is, and then across the four years there, my brain can read, oh, that's going down, that's better maybe, this is going up, that's concerning, whatever, I can read that. But this is how Tableau likes to read it, where it has the state all the way down, the same kind of sector all together, the years, for all that data, then the emissions. So that is not very easy for a human brain to function with, but that it likes it that way better. So. Okay, now we're gonna get out of here real quick. And um, I'm gonna just open my Tableau public from this screen and I click on that link. I'm on this page. I'm going to click on the um, sign in. And so Tableau just was bought by Salesforce. I don't know if anybody knows Salesforce. So it has a different quite uh, look and feel. But if you have an older account, it still works. Um, I just use my TTU email address. And then whatever password you put in. Not too many passwords to remember all this. All right, now I think I got the right one in there. Let's see what we got. Yeah, here we are. Okay, let's kind of talk about this page that we land on. So when you first come in here, often you land here as the viz of the day. So if you create visualizations and you want to have them nominated to be viz of the day, you can do so. And then they'll be highlighted on this screen. And you can look at all this data. You can see recent ones of other people down here. Um, really to kind of look around, you can look at creating in here. So if you needed some more information that we don't cover today, these would be good resources. And then here is some how-to videos. We'll look at the sample data in just a minute. And then over here, you can see this is my picture. And I'm actually going to go to my profile now. And you can customize this banner and your picture if you want. And then you can see here are all my older visualizations. And then I'm going to use this button, create a viz. And um, I'm just going to quickly toggle to the other page. You need to download these. If you haven't done that yet, go ahead and do that. I have already, so I'm just going to go back over here. And then from my computer, I'm just going to use the drop down and drag my emissions. We're going to use the emissions one first and put it in here. How's everybody doing so far? If you get stuck, let us know. We're here to help. So let's talk about this. This is kind of the page before what we were looking at in the PowerPoint. This is our work area. Um, okay. And this is where our data came in over here on the side. So you can see we have like that state CO2, 1910 to uh, 1990 to uh, 2018. And then we have another sheet. Um, state CO2 pivots, and then we have the state pops. And that's all under our data source down here at the bottom. Now that you can see that, go ahead and look. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this top sheet in to that state CO2 1990 to 2018. I'm going to drag it into the center here. So we're really just working with one spreadsheet at the moment. We'll look at some others in just a second. Um, but I thought it would be best to just start out with a, a single one to begin with. So um, it's thinking about it for a second. Let's hope that it processes that. Oh, it did. 
So now I've got it here. I can see the fields over here and I can start to see the columns over here. Now I never choose the update automatically because I want you all to learn, but feel free to automatically choose that. And then I don't think you have to see that happen again and again, but I'm just gonna choose the update now because I want people to be able to see that as they're coming through. So here is each field, here is each column that relates to those fields. And if it was longer here, you would see a longer spreadsheet that we could look through and we could scroll back and forth in the columns. Up here in the little blue box, I'm gonna right click that and I'm gonna make sure that field names are in the first row. Cause I know this data has headings that are bolded across the spreadsheet that I pulled in to um, make those field names. So if you want to have your field names come in, that's an easy way to clean up your data to have that at the top. So let's talk about that. We can see the different types of the items here. We can see the field names, but we can also look in the column here. So let's look at the first one here. We have CO2 state, and we have a little globe, if you will, as the icon. And that is a location reference is what it's meaning. Now if I click on that, right click on that, then I can see what is happening here. If I hover over geographic role and it pops out another little window, it has identified it as a state. And I think that's pretty cool because, wow, it's already learning so much. I have a question. Okay. Is the field name uh, same to the name of variable or variable name that we uh, uh, talk about in R or other languages? Yes, yes, I would say so that the field name is the same as the variable name. So yes, I would say that. And then um, this one is got an ABC. If I right click on that, then it's a string. Uh, and that just means that it's text. And which that makes sense. This is a state, so we know what you know states are, but this is just some other kind of data that we're gonna look at, so it has no idea how to identify that. Then the next one is the CO2 year. So remember, because it's a year, when we click right click on the little um, hashtag there, you can see that it's a number as a whole. It is not identifying that as a date. We can't say it's a date and a time because we don't have the time, but we can't even say it's a date because we don't have the three components. We need the day, the month, the year. Okay, and then let's look at the last one just so we can see it. It's also a number, but it knows that it's a decimal. So, we're good there. Um, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and let us um, work with this. We're gonna go ahead and click publish as, and this is how you publish to Tableau um, public. And this is the part that was not kicking over. So let's hope that it does. It usually takes a little bit of time. Oh, there, that was good. Um, and I'm just gonna call this emissions. You, you feel free to label it whatever you want to label it. I am going to check the show sheets as tabs. So that's what we were talking about in the PowerPoint, that you can let them manipulate the sheets and view the sheets or play with the data there. But if you want them to see the sheets at all, you have to check this mark. Um, I'm not going to do the password for the data source because um, I don't want to put anything here that's confidential anyway. So if I feel like I needed a password to look at this, you would want to not be putting that information on this platform. Go ahead and get into the Tableau desktop. And then I'm just going to click publish. And it should be pretty fast because it really already published it when it was asking us to name it. Okay, so now here we are in the sheet. And then let's kind of look around here for a second and get ready. Um, so here are our um, items that we pulled in. We have our dimensions and we have our um, measures. And so let's talk about these. Um, so we have our sector, our state, our year measure names, 
And then we have our um, emissions. And then we see anything that is italicized, that's latitude and longitude is generated because it knows that it has states in the data and states have defined boundaries. So they can pull all that information in already. So that was created for you, but kind of from the hint of the data that you're pulling in. And then, so here we are at the bottom corner. You can see that that's data source. If we clicked on that, we'd be back in the other window that we just came from. If we click on this sheet, this is what we're looking at here, this big sheet across the whole um, middle part of the screen. I'm gonna right click on the sheet name at the bottom and say rename. And I'm gonna rename this as a bar chart. And I'm gonna say, okay. So let's move some of our stuff around then we can try a simple bar chart, simple bar graph. Um, so I'm gonna take the CO2 states and I'm gonna take it to the columns. So what has it done? It's made a column for every state. And then I'm gonna pull that down to the rows. And then you can see we have one row with each state as a row. One, one column with each state as a row. I'm gonna put that back to the columns. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the CO2 emissions and put it in rows. So what do we have here now? We have a bar chart, but uh, this bar chart is not very useful to um, really kind of see the titles, right? We'll, we'll play around with that. Something else we want to know is, look, it automatically summed up all the emissions and it put the action out in front of its label there with the SUM in front of the CO2 emissions. So just be aware, that's what Tableau does, that it's gonna to try to pick that and it's going to um, see what is the best to do with your data. Now, the other thing here is I have it set to automatic here in the middle under um, this kind of drop down menu here between the table information and the sheet information. I could change that and be forcing it to pick something else, but if you, leave it to automatic, then it will often pick what you really needed in the first place. So um, because it knows that we have one dimension and one measure here, it picks this simple bar chart. We didn't even have to tell it that, even though we named the sheet that, it didn't know that that's what we named the sheet. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some of these buttons and what they'll do for us and how we can move around. Um, so we have a lot of information going horizontal, no, vertical, and uh, I can't really read that. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the sort order. So if I, I can do this a couple different ways, and I want to show you a couple different ways, so you can do it as well. If I right click on the CO2 state, I'm going to see the sort here. And I'm going to get that. And then I'm going to tell it to sort by field. Because um, one thing is that Tableau always sorts by alphabet by default. So now it is uh, sorting ascending, but I want to choose descending. So then it went ahead and reversed it, and I can close that. Now up here in the little buttons, I can click back a couple, and we'll have it all spread around. And I can use these descending or ascending ones here, just quickly. The other thing that I want to look at is that next button over, it kind of looks like a two arrows on the corner of a spreadsheet. If I click on that, it just reverses the, the chart. So now I can really see our labels of our state, so I can see what that all reads and I don't have to be twisting my head at it. And we can see that what is happening there? Texas has a lot of energy it's consuming. So, okay. Let's see here. What if we wanted to 
sort this out a different kind of way than just have it all summed up? What if we really wanted to include the sectors here? What would we go about doing? We can just drag the sectors to uh, the columns. And so it is broken in that up um, across the, what is it, five, one, two, three, four, yeah, five sectors that we have here. Um, but again, it is done it all with um, alphabetically. So um, we may want to fix that. But also, we just have one color here. And a lot of times for me, it's a lot nicer if each um, category, if you will, will um, have a different color. So I'm just going to drag the sectors to this column. I mean, to this color box here in the center, kind of moving around here. It's right here, this color box. We're going to use that. And now it's identified each sector with a color. Now I can manipulate those if I want to. This is just a standard pattern that it, it brings up. But I can come over here and change those colors, and we'll do that a little bit later um, for one um, item. And uh, we can uh, see that. But it just allows us to see that um, transportation is always going to be green. Our electrical power will always be orange in this setting unless we change the colors. So let's go ahead and sort by the sector now. And we're going to do that drop down again and sort. And we're going to do the field. And we're going to do descending. And then I'm going to close this. So now we have the items that are um, more are at the top. So we have electric power and transportation and CO2 sector there. Those are the biggest emissions that we're looking at. So is there a way we could look at this data that would be a little bit more easily for our eyes? We still have a lot of data that we're not really looking at down here. So maybe we just want to look at the top 10, the top 15, whatever we think might be good. So um, we want to take the states, and we're going to put that in this filter box up here at the top. And that's going to bring a pop out a window for us. And I'm going to close this just real quick so we can see those. So we have some different options here in this filtering um, pop out window. We have the general, wild card, condition, and top and bottom. Now we're going to use the top and bottom, but let's talk about these other ones first. So if I do the general again, you can see if I wanted to highlight for whatever reason, maybe red states in a um, you know data that's related to politics. Maybe I only want to look at the red states. I could pick and choose which ones I want highlighted here. Um, if I wanted the wild card, I can say it has to match this value. So whatever I'm looking at in that data, I'm going to pull something there, and it has to contain it. Ends with it, starts with it. If I'm searching that data, I can use this one. Um, this conditional is um, usually by field, and then you would say, if this, then that. And you could do that. And then this top bottom is set up, and we're going to use it by field. And we're going to use it for the last of uh, the 15 top. We'll leave it at top, and we'll use the 15. And we're looking at the emissions. And we're going to say OK. Now, if this is so far down that you can't get to that, sometimes that happens. Just pull this pop-up window up a little bit, and then you'll be able to see the whole OK or whatever button you need down here. I've seen that happen on my um, computer in my office, but here, usually it doesn't happen. So it may just be the size of your screen a little bit. Okay. So now that helps us really look at that data. We're not looking at something that's running off the edge of the uh, information of the sheet. You know, we can see the top 15 states that are using the most emissions, and we can uh, uh, be able to visualize that a little bit better. Now, this is a 
the standard bar chart, and um, it makes sense that we are using rows and columns um, and how to manipulate it in Tableau. But what if we wanted to look at charts where you don't have rows and columns at all? Um, uh, does it make sense to think about all of these charts in terms of columns and uh, rows? Not really. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this here. We'll come back to it in a minute. But I'm going to get a new sheet. And I'm going to rename this sheet. I typically like to rename my sheets right at the beginning. Some people like to name them at the end. Um, but I think it just helps me keep organized. And I'm going to start us off with tree map and say, OK. So we're going to look here at the um, sector area mission. So we're going to drive sector to text. So now we can see we have some labels here. Now often um, in Tableau, you wouldn't be using the text box unless you were trying to create labels. But I just thought you might want to see that and, and see what is happening here. Um, and then we're going to drag as CO2 emissions to the size. And so now we're in that tree map, if you will. So um, this tree map, this is what how a tree map looks. It has the biggest square, and these are all rectangles, has the biggest rectangles, and then it narrows down to the smallest rectangle. And this is often used in business. Um, finance uses this a lot. I'm in social sciences. I, I don't really use this as much, so I never really heard of a tree map until I've been in Tableau a little bit. But if you wanted to use this, you could um, set it up this way. But um, again, I'm still letting it pick for me what I want it to choose. But let's say instead of using this tree map, these um, rectangles, we want to use circles. So I'm going to do that drop down menu for the automatic. I'm going to scoot down to the circle. And so now we have that packed bubble chart that we were talking about earlier. And now I'm going to change uh, it back to text. Um, and then I'm going to um, use the text here in the drop down menu. And so now we have the word cloud, but I really like the word cloud to be colorful. So I'm going to drag another sector to color and it will make those the colors that we have seen before. And I, I mean, most people know what a word cloud is, but if you don't, the largest um, number is the largest word. So that's why commercial is the smallest. Electric power we had seen already, orange was out front. And so it's the next. Um, and I'm just gonna rename tree map because it's no longer a tree map. It is a word cloud. I'm gonna leave that there. Okay. Now we're gonna get another new sheet. So we've been able to get some charts and see what Tableau can do, but what have we been, um, have we been getting what we really thought we should be getting? So let's look, take a look again at the bar chart. Some of these states, um, so I'm gonna click on the bar chart. Y'all can follow if you want. Um, some of these states are our most populous ones. What if I wanted to normalize for population? Um, would that change this chart? Let's see. So we want to do some per capita calculations. I'm going to go ahead and click on my data source. And we're going to pull in this um, our file here, the state populations one. So the last um, sheet in that series. I'm going to drag that right into the center here. Now make sure you don't put it on top because that'll make a different kind of um, choice. This is called a union. If you drop it right on top, it really puts it all in one sheet. And this is just called a relationship because it has that blue line following me around everywhere. And I can drop that anywhere. But uh-oh, look what happened. We have lots of uh, um, errors there. Let's see our warning signs. So we have an alert right here at the top. 
We have a uh, exclamation alert right here at the relationship. We have our anchor signs here and here. And what it's really telling us is it doesn't know how to read that first uh, sheet to our second sheet. So it doesn't know how to connect state CO2 1990 to 2018 to the state pops. So we got to tell it what to do. So let's look down here. It is actually letting us look at the relationship. And it says here is this sheet. And here is the operator we're wanting it to be equal to. And here is the state pops. So I'm going to click and do the state, CO2 state, to the population state. So now both these columns are related by state. Now we're going to add another one. And I'm going to do CO2 year. And we're going to do the population here. So now, look, all the warning signs have um, gone away. This relationship is an okay relationship. It knows how to read that information. We can make sure that our headings are right up here and see it change the information in the bottom square when I clicked on that to look back at that data. If I click on this square, it's gonna change it to the state population information. I'm gonna make sure that those came in correctly with the fields as they're in their first row, those headers. And then we can look at the relationship again just by clicking on the blue line. And we can see that information that we put together there. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this population data um, because we haven't looked at that yet. You may have it automatically set, so it might have already populated, but I'm going to pull mine in. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull this up so that we can see the fields over here and we can look at our stuff. I'm just going to cursorily look at that, make sure everything's looking good because we've done this step before. But we have a state, we have a world, that's a geolocation, we have um, estimates, we have a number, it's a whole number, and then we have the year. Remember, it's going to be considered a whole number, not a year, because um, it doesn't have the month and the day and the year. Okay, so now we can go back to our sheet three over here at the bottom. And it will pull that information in. It's taking mine a minute to come across. If you're there, that's good. Mine just populated. Since I'm already here and I want to kind of make sure that's all published, I'm going to go ahead and click on publish one more time here. That should have published when I moved it across, but since it was acting funny this morning, I just wanted to make sure that it did because I wanted to make sure that everything else was being saved so that if it does crash in the middle, I could pull back out to what was last published. Okay, so now let's look and see what we got with this now. So now we have two um, different data sets in here, and we have a relationship between those data sets. And I can see that information over here. There's a little toggle switch right there. I'm going to open it. This is the information we had before. And we have the information below. Then I'm going to toggle some more. And now we have some more um, different um, items there, dimensions and measures that we can pull from. Like, of course, everything came in just like it did for the first time. But we can quickly look here that we have the state and the year an estimate, and account. And of course, again, we have the latitude and longitude because we have the boundaries for the state. So all of that came across perfectly. So now, since we were really wanting to look at that information, we wanted to do a per capita calculation. So Tableau can do math just like Excel can. And, um, you know, uh, we can have it calculate um, how to po the population affects the emissions. So we need a calculated field. You can do this in several different ways, but I'm going to show you if we go to the CO2 emissions and we right click, then we're going to hover over create, then we're going to get to calculated field. 
I'm going to leave that up for a second so people can kind of look what we did. We right clicked on emissions. We came down to create and we're going to select that calculated field. I'm going to populate that now. So then now it has a pop a box out here, a pop-up box. And uh, let's call this something. We're going to name this function that we're going to make it do something. I'm going to use normalized emissions. So I'm just going to type that in so I can remember when it ends up being in my uh, dimensions and uh, measures, I'd be able to find it again. And then I'm just going to type emissions. Sorry, I have a hair. It's driving me nuts. Oh, it was on my glasses. Oh. So now, <laughs> uh, here you can see that it's already pulling in CO2 emissions because that's where we started from. So it knows you, it want, you want to do something with that uh, number. So then I'm just going to put my cursor here and type in that area. I'm going to push the slash because remember in math, that means divide. And so then we're going to do, uh, we're going to start typing population and we're going to get population estimate. And you can see, I just typed in pop and it pulled up all the stuff that I could select from that second sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and click that first one. And then this is going to disappear, I think. Oh no, it, I forgot it tells us. So when we were kind of in the middle of that, where we had a number and we had it divided and we didn't have a number over here, it was telling us a calculation error. But now that we have a number over there, it um, says that the calculations are valid and we can say, okay. So now you can see it's highlighted a new um, item down here for us to look at. And I want you to be able to see, but you're gonna have to look on your own screen there's a little teeny tiny equals in front of this number sign. And that indicates that it's a calculated field. So be aware of that. And so now, since I have this highlighted, I'm just gonna hold the control and then, um, hold on. So if I hold the control on a Windows, then this will work. Or if you're on a Mac, you would hold the Mac button. Uh, the command Mac button. And so since I have this one already highlighted, I'm going to go and click on CO2 state. And now I have both of those highlighted. And then I'm just going to drag them to the center and it should do something with them. So it automatically picked a map. That's pretty cool. I'm going to kind of uh, get this. This little triangle out here lets you pull that out. And then if you get the four arrow cursor out, then it allows you to manipulate that around. My screen is quite smaller here than it is on my desk at home. I usually can see all of that, but I cannot see all of that. Okay, and then before we go further, maybe we just need to be looking at the US. Maybe we'll just look at that. And then we'll go to show me, and we have all of these here. So you can see whatever is highlighted you could use. I kind of like the filled in map better. So I'm going to click the filled in map. And so now we're on a scale. So um, it did um, sum up all of these normalized emissions. And you can see that sum here in the um, box where it is located. It's summed in front of the normalized emissions. Um, and so, um, I didn't know how I wanted to split that up. So um, we can split that up um, by state if we drag the state to the columns or if we double click on the state, CO2 state. I'm just gonna double click on that and see if that will. Oh, I had already done that step, I'm sorry. I was gonna click back. Oh yeah, so, no, I'm gonna do that in a second. I wanted to do something else first. Okay. Oh yeah, I guess we do do a bar chart here, don't we? We can take this over to the stat chart. And then we can divide that up, I bet you. It's already divided up by state, so it's okay. Okay. And 
So let's go ahead and get this kind of sorted. Um, I'm just gonna do the descending here. And so now we have Wyoming at the top instead of Texas. Texas is still here, but remember Wyoming is a lot less populous than Texas. And so they must be using more emissions than Texas is doing. Okay, so that is a little bit of how we could get some calculations into Tableau as well. Now let's go ahead and rename this because we haven't ever named this one. I'm going to go ahead and name it the stacked um, bar chart. And so we can say, okay. All right. Then I'm going to get another sheet. And we just have a few more. Um, and then we'll kind of look at our uh, dashboard. So let's go ahead and do a line sheet. I'm going to rename this uh, sheet four um, line uh, chart. Say okay. So um, let's use a year for our horizontal axis. That's usually how you would set up a timeline, if you will. Um, and that's usually moving from left to right, of course. So we're going to do our CO2 year. And um, you can use population year two if you want. I'm just going to drag that to uh, our columns. And you can see here is the timeline set up there across the top. And so we need to give it another norm, uh, number. So let's go ahead and use the normalized emissions again. And I'm going to take that just to the rows. And so we can see that we have it summed up, again, the normalized emissions, and we have that uh, stair-stepping across uh, all these years that we have listed here. So if we wanted to split this up by sector or state, would there be a preference of why we would choose a sector over state? Does anybody know? I would like, oh, you want to say? I would like to uh, use sector because it's only five. If we did state, we'd be back to 50 options again. So I'm just going to take that uh, sector, CO2 sector, and we'll drag it to detail. And it's going to drop it into five different lines. Um, and then if we wanted to use label, we could drag sector to label. So from here in the box, we're going to drag it to the label. And then we can see the labels are out here to the side. And then, y'all know I like the color, so I'm going to drag this back to color. So now we have the color. We don't have the label anymore, but we have this nice... Um, I cannot think of the word, suddenly. Anyways, this is just describing what is in the, the chart. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get one more chart, and we'll do a map real quick, and then we can see our dashboard. So I'm going to rename this to map. Say okay. drag the CO2 state to the center and it creates our um, map again and we can move it around if we need to by opening it up and getting that four thing and I'm just going to try to keep it centered here over the U.S. because that's the data we have. Um, and then um, again the show me, I like the field in map so I'm going to drop that down and use the build in map. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that. The one thing I don't like about it is the show me never closes on its own. Once I select something in there, I wish it would just go ahead and close. So just be aware of that. Now I'm going to drag the normal um, emissions um, to color. And so we have our um, Grayscale again, or 
because the blue scale. But remember when we drag the sector to color, every sector has a different color. Um, but Tableau knows if you have a dimension or a measure. And dimensions have multiple colors and measures have the scale. So that kind of helps us identify what our data is looking like. Um, now, if we drag our normal emissions um, to the size, the size, can we get size bubbles? We did not get size bubbles. I think that is not the step we went to. I think we're going to leave this one here and it'll be functional for our dashboard. Um, then we want to get ourselves down here, not to a new sheet, but the next one over is a new dashboard. And the last button there is a new story. We won't really cover a new story here today, but it's kind of like if you were going to put a PowerPoint together in here, you could use that to build something similar to slides. And so I'm gonna go back to our new dashboard. That's that. Of the last three buttons, it's the middle button. And so now we're on this screen and it really is only using like a third of my screen here. So I can see here under size, it's listed as fixed. But before we change that, let's look under here. So it's really identifying the desktop browser. And you can see there's lots of things here. Maybe you have a laptop that you want to use this in a meeting and you want to use that as the visualization platform. You can put it on a web page. You can have it set to use a phone, an iPad, whatever you want to do in here. I'm going to actually leave it at the desktop browser, but I'm going to say, um, do automatic and it will make it use the whole screen. So I often use it this way and then we'll um, let it just uh, fill the whole screen of whatever I'm looking on. Okay, so here we are. Um, let's go ahead and pull some of these in. I'm going to go ahead. We see over here we have our sheets now instead of our um, measures and our dimensions. I'm going to pull in the bar chart into the center and it's going to fill up the whole area. And then I'm going to pull in uh, the word cloud, sure, and put it over here. And then I'm going to get the map and I'm going to put it over here, but I don't want it to be in a little spot. So I'm going to try to force it to be across the top. So I'm going to try to get it to land here. And now it'll push those things down and the map will be on top. And you can see here we have a little icon where we can see that little tab. If I went to the other ones and clicked on them, I could get it. But if I grab that, I can move this back around if I needed to. But I can also move these other borders down if I wanted the map to have a little bit more space. Um, I think I might even bring in the line chart over here and get rid of this word cloud. I'm just going to close that. Then that way the line chart has a little bit more space. Maybe I think this bar chart needs a little bit more space than the line chart. So I can just grab that and move it over a little bit. Um, and then over here, we can see that we have um, our legends. That was the word I was trying to think of earlier. <laughs> We can um, get rid of some of this, like we don't really need this. So I'm just going to click on that and get rid of it so we have a little bit more space. Um, we could leave this normalized emissions with a grayscale up here, so we might move it on top of this one. Let me see if I can drag that on top of this here. Let me see if I can grab this one and set it below here. That might be good. Yeah. That'll give us our best shots. Drag that back out a little bit. So now this is, this legend's kind of with the map. This is with the other colors. So we can see it kind of all sitting there. Now let's also talk about here. Um, I'm still manipulating the data. I can leave it totally open now and let 
people that, as my audience, if I publish this, they can manipulate it. Or I can say, oh, I only want to talk about Texas, really. So I'm just going to come in here and click on Texas from the bar chart. And then if I use this little funnel button, it will narrow down to just Texas and the other maps. Or the other views, I should say, the other views. But maybe I don't want to just talk about Texas. Maybe I'm really concerned about transportation, so I'm just going to click back over here so we can get that unhighlighted, and I'm going to click on transportation. And now it's filtering to what is happening. And we can make the map come in a little bit closer. Let me see if I can move this around a little bit so we can see that a bit better. I'll make that a little bit larger and move this back over here a little bit. So now we can see transportation is a concern and the states that are highlighted. So that may not be useful information from the line chart, right? But the other two. And so you would build your um, views and your dashboards to what you're really trying to highlight here. Now I'm gonna reset this so it, it is open to everybody to be selecting anything. And I'm going to kind of scroll back out so we might see Alaska too. See Alaska or Hawaii. We never see Hawaii. So I'm kind of centering that the best I can so that when I publish it, then it will be maneuverable for uh, the audience if I want it to be that way. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this. Let's see if it makes sure it goes through. Yeah, okay, I think it's done publishing. So then I'm going to use this little X over here on the corner, and that will put me back in my profile. So here it is. And so we've landed on the bar chart sheet. Because I said I would let it view all the tabs, I can move through these. And I'm really not me now. I could be any public person. And I can see the word cloud. I can see the stacked bar chart. I can see the line chart, I can see the map we created, and I can see the dashboard. Oh, well, we forgot to name our dashboard. I usually rename that something like emissions so that we could have it all here. But here you can also do those uh, maneuvers and find those settings. Okay, does anybody have any questions? That's how we kind of use Tableau. Now we're going to look at another data set if we want and pull in some other information and try to create some other ones. Anybody have any questions so far? We're doing good. Okay, so here, I'm gonna leave this set up. Oh, let's talk about some other things here. Sorry, I forgot. So if I wanted to go back and edit, the data from this, I could go ahead and click here. That'll throw me back into that other window we were in. And I'm not going to go ahead and do that, although I really would like to change my dashboard name. But um, since it's been a little clunky, I don't want to get us in a loop that we can't get out of. If I want to favorite this one so it comes up to the top in my profile, I can do that. I can share this any way I want to with other people. I can give this a link to this. So maybe Jean Ching and I are collaborating on something. I can send a link to Jean Ching and she can put it on a website and then we can all see it. And then I can download this information. Now I can only download that because of um, it's my data. And we're going to make sure we make sure that this is not. So under the settings, you can see the this on my profile. I could choose to turn that off if I don't want to. I can turn to the sheets off here if I want to. I can turn that off. And now if I refreshed, all these would go away. Oh, it's going to refresh for me. Oh, because maybe I was on the bar chart. I think my cursor was on the bar chart the last. So I'm going to turn that back on. It'll probably refresh. But this, this is what is allowing others to download or make a copy of this viz. And I don't ever turn that on. I want to keep it for myself. Does anybody, and this is where you can uh, nominate it for uh, 
Well, it's still highlighting the settings, but if you click on this little award thing, it's to nominate this biz for the nomination for the biz of the day. So. Okay, let's go ahead and look up here. We said that we were going to come get some sample data. This is where I found the Netflix data. So you can come through here and look at some different data if you just want to kind of play around with it. There's some information for about the Great British Break Off. There's some FIFA information. There's some Airbnb information. So our Netflix was up here. Here. You can download that set. Or I already have this one set here. It's the same set. So feel free to download it from there. And then I'm going to get back into my profile by clicking on my picture or your gray circle if you don't have a picture there. Click profile. I'm going to create a new viz. I'm going to pull this information from the computer because I'd already downloaded it. I have the Netflix titles. I'm going to open that. It's going to populate here. I'm going to give you a minute to do that if we need to. We just uh, loaded in the Netflix information and we're in our data source here and we have our sheet down here. Um, so we're going to get our relationship set up for this um, uh, information. So I'm going to just grab this first one and I'm going to put it over here. We don't really know much about this data, right? So we're going to have to dig around together with it. So this is looking here. I'm going to make sure that it has the field names in the first row. Looks like all of that is coming right. Um, and then we're going to update now. And so we have quite a few string ones here. So we have some like minutes and seasons, but we have what? This is not tidy data, is it? It's got some holes in it, but we're going to make it work. And then we have the type and title. Oh, but we have a date added, and it's a true date because it has the three components. So now we have the calendar there icon, and if we right-click on that, we can see that it is a true date. And so that shows us that. We have the year separated from the date, and uh, that should be... Uh, the whole number because um, it's just going to be a number remember and then we have some string data oh and then we have the show id here at the bottom at, or the last column i mean and it's a whole uh, number as well okay so then i'm just going to bring the netflix titles cast over and remember we're not dropping on top we're dropping out to the um left to the right and we want that blue string in between. And so then it is looking here. There's no errors. We have the show ID from our first list. And it's equal to the show um, for the, the Netflix cast. Netflix titles cast. So it also has the show ID. So that's how we're going to relate these different data sets together um, so that it knows how to read it. I'm going to go ahead and update mine now. Just make sure that this is looking like what I thought it should be. It is. I'm going to make sure this one came across with its field names in the first row so that it's generating those names, our field names. And so then let's go ahead and get the category. And I'm just going to drop it right below that cast. We're making sure that it all comes across. There's no errors. I'm going to update this. I'm going to make sure this comes across with its name. It does. But then I look here and it says listed in. And that's not my favorite word. So let's see if we can think about um, some other term there. I'm going to actually change that to, uh, we could do category or we could do genre. And so I'm going to actually right click on here, rename this, and I'm going to say, I'll choose genre. So that just means different types of shows. And I'm going to push enter, and it's 
renamed that whole column, so that's good, even before we pull it into our working area. And we can look at our relationship again, and it was all okay, and our numbers are all okay, our, our columns are good. I'm just gonna grab the next one for the countries, and that looks good, no error. Our ID is here, we're good to go. And then the last one, and I just want to make sure you realize, like, if you pull it too far, it will be matching to the wrong one. So make sure you know what you're wanting it to be on and pulling it over. And so you can see that. Now, I can look at each one of these sheets by clicking on it again. I can look at each one of these relationships by clicking on it again. So we just wanted to make sure you're aware of that. Um, there is a one where you can do a union where it pulls it all together, and then there's some more is joins information. And you can learn more about that here, but we will just be using what they call in here a relationship. And it's just um, identifying how that sheet should be read to the next sheet. All right, if everybody is good here, I'm gonna go ahead and get us into our sheet one, and then we'll publish our data too. Hopefully it will not take too long for us to move over. Well, that was very good. And I'm going to go ahead and put publish as so that I can name this. And I'm going to just call this Netflix um, data. Or you, you can name it whatever you want to name it. I might put in 2024. I might put in fall. And I'm going to make sure I do the sheets because I like to have the sheets out there. If you don't want them, you don't have to for whatever your reason. Maybe you're doing some big project and you just want them to have the dashboard. Or maybe you do some kind of big project where you put it all a dashboard together, but you only want them to see one sheet. You can even do that. And I'm not going to do the password, and I'm just going to click publish. That should go pretty fast because we haven't done anything yet. Okay. Look at our left-hand side menu there. That's a lot of data we're going to be looking at. But so you can see each sheet has come in, and we have all these um, dimensions and measures. So we have the Netflix titles at the top, then the Netflix uh, Netflix titles cast, the Netflix category. And actually, I'm going to just have my mouse here, and I'm going to pull that over because we have a lot of space um, there out to the I'm right. So I just want to be able to see this a little bit more. And then we were saying the cast. Now we have the Netflix titles category, then the countries, and then the directors. And then we have the longitude and the latitude because we have a true geolocation um, item here. And it's countries. Countries, just like states, have declare boundaries, so um, that is what, what we have there. Okay, and so let's go ahead and do um, our first sheet. I'm gonna just try to do a simple bar chart. So I'm gonna rename it that. You wanna name it something else, you can. And then let's go ahead and find our genre. That's our different kind of categories. Um, and we'll move that to the columns. And then we will do uh, our we'll do our title counts. Yes, title counts. Let me see. And that is here. Here. Sorry, that one's always hard for me to see in that list. <laughs> so we'll take the uh, Netflix title counts and we'll put them in the rows. So we have our simple bar chart that we have. I'm going to go ahead and swap it around. And let's go ahead and do descending from the top. And we do know at the very bottom we have some null information. So if we were really going to use this data set, we would want to clean this data and then come in here and manipulate it in Tableau. Because I think you're going to see that quite often. 
So we can see that we have the international movies at the top there. And um, we just have about three minutes now. So I might kind of get us to get through a few things here and then get our dashboard ready. Um, if anybody wants to try a line chart, feel free to do so. I'm just going to get the new sheet. Does anybody have a concept there? Concept here. Well, since we have that date added, let's look at that. And then we can have a line chart over the years. So I'm just going to um, compare that to our Netflix titles. So I'm going to take the dat date added and put it in our columns. That, of course, gives us our timeline that we're used to. And then our Netflix titles, counts. Oof. Here in the rows. So you can see that we had none to begin with and we started adding stuff in 2008 and then we have until 2020. Now, if they put this up in 2020, that's why that big drop off is there. It's not necessarily that it's actually nothing new on Netflix, although it sometimes feels that way. Um, but since we just have the year and we have such a good date added information, Let's go ahead and see if we can get it to show us some more of that date. I was thinking if we right click on here, we can look down here and see, oh, what if we added the month? And so I'm gonna add the month and that will give us a little bit more data that we can look at here. And so as we pull our, our cursor across, we can see, oh, look, you know, October 21, they only added 11 items that month. But then we can come over here to some of these other peaks and see that they're adding quite a bit. November 19th, they added almost 300 items. And then we can see what our next month is. And January is the last month, and that's why it has a big, deep uh, 2020 um, peak down there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and grab another new sheet and um, let's go ahead and see if we can um, make a map. So I'm going to double click on the country. That will automatically pull the map up for us. And then I, I like the field, so I'm going to open the show me and get the field map. And then I'm going to close to show me. And then I'm going to make sure that um, we can use the um, title count again so we can get our color scale. So I'm going to pull that over to the middle and it will pull it all the way in and it will do the count um, of the countries. So I'm going to kind of reset our map again. If we can't get somewhat most of the world together on one page. And so we can see on our grayscale, the United States is using a lot of Netflix, or uh, a lot of titles are available in uh, the United States from Netflix. But look how many countries, and this is from 2020. So this is like four year old data. Look how many countries were already having different platforms from Netflix. And then look and see if there's some interesting stuff here. What is happening in India? They have a lot of data, uh, a lot of shows being loaded too. So it looks like, of course, the US has the most, but everybody else is in some kind of green state. India is a little blue green. And then I think really uh, the UK is another shade of blue green. So you can see that. So that was shocking to me when I saw that the first time. I was like, wow, this is from 2020. And Quite a bit of the world is watching Netflix at some point. There. Let's go ahead and rename this sheet for our map. I'm just going to type in map here. Say OK. And then I'm just really going to have just those quick three there. And then we can create a new dashboard.
one if we want. And remember here, I'm going to have to reset it if it's going to use the whole screen. So I'm going to click on that drop down. And then instead of using the fixed size, I'm going to use the automatic. And then I'm ready to pull our stuff over. So I'll pull the bar chart over. I'll pull the line chart over here. Then I might put the map on the bottom on this one. See if it will go across the bottom down there. And again, we have our legend if we need it over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and publish this just in case we get kicked out. We don't have very much color here, do we? We might go back and make one of something that is a little bit more colorful. But let's go ahead and um, I guess we could think about that. Let's see if we can tinker around with that. I'm going to go ahead and get one more sheet. Oh, and we can rename our dashboard here since we haven't done that before. So now that we have created this dashboard, if you just click on the dashboard with a right click again, you'll get that same kind of pop out where you can name it. So we could say Netflix. And we can say that was, that was from 2008, I think. I'm going to guess it, 2008 to 2020. Say OK. And um, then I'm going to try to get another sheet here. Let's see what we can do with uh, genre and see if we can end up with um, a word cloud. Maybe that will be fun and that could be colorful. So I just pulled genre into the text over here. And so I have all of my labels out here, if you will. But then if we pull genre into... Um, oh, wait, let's go ahead and make it into the circles because they're not going to show much there. But I think if we pull another one over to color, I need it back to the label. That's why I need it to text. That's what we want. But we want the size to be there. We're going to see if this works. Nope, yep, that did not work. I'm going to undo that. Count. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to put that in the size. Yes. So let's, let's talk that out. I was all over the place there for a second. We first take genre to the text so that we can get the titles out here. And then I probably should have taken the Netflix titles to the count, to the size here, so that it would make them uh, size orientated. And then you can just drag another genre to color and it'll make them all colorized. So that way we have a little bit of color as we're moving into um, a dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and rename this. Let's go ahead and name it a word cloud. We'll leave that there. I can't spell cloud clearly suddenly. <laughs> all right. And then we'll go ahead. And I think you can redrag these around so that. Just to be nice, we have all the sheets in one area, and then we have the dashboard is the next one. So I just grabbed that and pulled it back. Just kind of like you could move sheets around on the tabs in Excel, very much the same kind of function. And I'm going to go ahead and publish this so we can look at that. It's going to take a second now. Yeah. Maybe you're seeing yours already and can manipulate that. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to be like, nope, no more. I'm going to give that a little bit of time to move around if it needs to. Um, hopefully it won't take too much more time. 
How are you doing out there? Did either one of y'all's move? I'm in the, I'm traveling the last one. Oh, you're struggling. Yeah, because I went real fast. I will, I'll try and, and say that real. How is everybody online? Anybody struggling? Maybe y'all are seeing it because y'all are probably at different locations. Um, maybe yours has processed already. again unless you have any questions online i didn't see any pop up but i just check them one more time i'm gonna go ahead and exit out here so now i'll see my netflix data over here again i have the line chart the bar chart the map the word cloud that we just created and then netflix data from 2008 to uh, 2020. And, uh, oh, wait, I didn't put the word cloud over here. I might go ahead and go back and do that. Let's see if I can make it work. Because then we could see if I clicked on international movies, then you would see it interact with the um, other one. Otherwise, this data doesn't really interact with itself very much. But we could also just uh, make sure our settings are right. I'm not gonna allow anybody else to have this. It can be viewed on my profile and I show the sheets. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this edit button. Well, that will throw me back into the other screen so I can just add the word cloud here uh, on the dashboard. I'm gonna drag it and let it sit next to here. Maybe I'll pull maybe I'll pull the line chart down here so that the map will have to be resorted. And I might give the map a little bit more space than the line chart. And then if we get that published and put onto the profile page, then we can see the interaction between these two. I might do that here because I'm not sure it will go. Well, it did go. I'm going to go ahead and go over there, see if we can make that work. So here, if I was clicking here, I can keep only. And it should interact here. Maybe it didn't show that up in the dashboard. Let me make sure that the dashboard is There it goes. That's interesting. I'm not going to leave that here highlighted because then it would force it the, that way. If I published it that way, then it would only show that when you got to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go over there. Um, and then um, let's see if we can get that to filter in the other screen. It is doing so good before I don't think all of this was happening. Oh, yeah, there it goes. I was just too impatient, <laughs> which is not surprising. Oh, also it impacted the map. So you can see that if we just look at the international movies, that is really related to probably international to the U.S. is probably the base there. So that's why we see very few listed here, but lots from India. So that's good. But all around the world has a smattering as well. So that's really good. So that is some quick and dirty information in Tableau. Is there any questions we want to kind of cover that? I wanted to leave a few minutes if you had questions. Is there something we got lost on? Um, do we have anything, any kind of questions like any of that? 
I'll give people in chat if they want to unmute, you can ask something. And if not, you can type it in chat. What should we do next for uh, building the expertise in Tableau? In Tableau? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think our next place would probably be here. You can look at how to videos. So if there's something that you really want to know how to do, I'll just go ahead and open those for us. Then you can start to kind of pull that information in. And they have a whole um, set of information there. Also, if you've been in YouTube, you can Google Tableau and um, how to find, you know, whatever it is that you want to look for. If there's a specific thing that you're like, oh, I want to know how to do a calculated field for some kind of thing or some other kind of calculation. It will help you kind of learn how to do that. And I think the next best thing for me that helped me was that I really took some data that I was working on with that had some context for myself, not just data sets I found on the open web to use, and then use that to really see how is that really impacting? What charts did I want to create for that data? Could I create it here in Tableau? Did it come out the way I thought it did? Those are the things that I worked on next. Yeah, sure. I saw there was some chit-chatting in the chat. Anybody have a question there? Well, there will be any more training sessions. No, we usually just do this basic um, one of Tableau and then encourage you to find what you need to for your next steps. I'm in those different places. Tableau has a lot of information out how to use its materials. YouTube, like I just suggested. But also, I know that I troubleshoot with um, students so that if you really want something to be working and you can't figure out how to do that, I can look at that. Jing Jing can look at that. would help you kind of figure it out, especially if it was on data that you were looking at for a presentation or a publication that you're using for um, school or you know, related to academia. Oh, that's right. Jean Jean just said, and I know you can't probably hear her as well as me, um, but uh, Udemy is a product that is being used across campus. It is a platform that kind of looks like a YouTube for academic, has lots of videos there, how to learn things there. So go ahead and look at Udemy. And I think you can just Google Udemy and TTU and it will come right up for you. And so that you could find some information there about Tableau if you needed to go to the next step. Good, good, good right resource there, Ching Ching. What a great librarian. <laughs> okay. If we don't have any other questions, then we'll just get out a few minutes early. And the video will be on that page that we've been launching from here. I'll update this video. This was from my spring um, one, and then we'll put the one that we just recorded up. Uh, I'll probably get that up tomorrow afternoon. So if you wanted to come back and watch that, see the steps, you would have it here. Okay, everybody, then I'm going to stop sharing. <laughs>